Hi everyone. So now we finished off module one, which was the Baroque era, and now we're moving on to the classical era. This is just going to be a short sort of overview lecture of what this module is going to cover. So like I said, we're dealing with classical period. So we're looking at around 1750 to 1825. As usual, these dates are only approximate. There's a great deal of fluidity between when the Baroque period becomes classical, becomes romantic, becomes modern. Uh, so again, make that note in your exam, or at least consider making that note in the, your exam, that these dates really are just approximate. So what's going on in the world during the classical era in music? Well, we're still in the Age of Enlightenment, an era, um, as we discussed in the Baroque era overview lecture, in which uh, reason was being held up as this universal chief virtue. Now, there's varying opinions as to when this Age of Enlightenment or Age of Reason began, but it's generally held that this period ends by the early 1800s. So if we consider that the classical era in music is roughly 1750 to 1825, or at least beginning solidly within the Enlightenment. Now, this is a period of great turmoil uh, throughout the Western world. In 1765, the American Revolution sort of kicks off. In 1789, we have the storming of the Bastille in France. And in 1801, we have the Kingdom of Great Britain and the Kingdom of Ireland. So two separate kingdoms joining together and becoming the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. So these are the general terms that the RCM wants you to know for the classical era. So we have classicism, Viennese school, and absolute music, and that's our top row. Uh, and then and separately and sort of all joined together, we have sonata form, exposition development, recapitulation coda, and sonata cycle. Now, uh, these bottom two rows all deal with what sonata form is. And we're going to just have an entire separate video about uh, sonata form and how to sort of piece it all together. So today we're just going to be looking at those top terms. So classicism, Viennese school, and absolute music. So classicism refers to the cultures of ancient Roman Greece, as well as the art, architecture, music of the late 18th centuries. The artistic products of these periods adhere uh, to principles of symmetry, balance, and proportion, emphasizing excellence, enduring value, and timeless quality. There's this revitalization and sort of newfound reliance upon the aesthetic principles of the ancient Roman and Greek civilizations but also of ancient philosophical principles and ideas developed by the big three of ancient Greek philosophy, so Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. While the Baroque era was ornate, golden flowery, this return to ancient aesthetic sensibilities meant that those Baroque artistic ideals would be giving way to something far more elegant, far cleaner. I think that's a nice, if not slightly clunky, little segue into our next concept, which is absolute music. So, as you can see on your screen here, also known as pure music, absolute music is instrumental music without extra musical associations. Music of this sort has generic titles reflecting tempos, genres, or forms such as sonata, allegretto, minuet, and rondo. Now, absolute music stands in stark contrast the program music that we were looking at in the Baroque module, where the music was connected to, as the RCM puts it, something extra musical. So think of uh, Bavaldi Spring, for example, where he's attached this piece of music to poetry. It can also be attached to art, specific, specific feeling, a painting. Now, there's something intellectually elegant, something uh, classical, about having a piece of music exist by itself without any extraneous associations, and that's what absolute music is. Now, the big three, and I realize I've used this term <laughs> twice in one lecture now, of the classical era are a Haydn, Mozart, and Beethoven, and these three form what's known as the Viennese school. So the Viennese school refers uh, as we just said, to the musical style forged by Haydn, Mozart, and Beethoven, as well as their contemporaries in uh, late 18th century Vienna, Austria, which was flourishing as a musical center. We'll, of course, study each of these guys in a lot more detail throughout this module, so we won't dwell on this any longer at this point. Next time, we're going to 
be looking in detail at sonata form, which, like I said, is going to be a whole lecture into itself. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next one.